Greetings everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Captain Rye, and in today's video I'm back in my favorite Commonwealth cruiser, HMAS Perth, here in World of Warships. As the battle gets underway, it's domination match mode, the map is ring, and while I've spawned directly in between the A and the D cap point, I'm actually gonna go ahead and start making my way towards the D cap point. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that the Perth is probably one of my favorite cruisers in the game. And it's not because it's particularly well armored or because it has insane guns. No, it's because it has a combination of high explosive torpedoes, catapult fighters, low detectability, and a very unique smoke screen that allows me to basically creep along slowly and avoid getting torpedoed while simultaneously consistently putting out rounds on to enemy ships. Now, this battle is a tier 6 maximum battle. That's good for me, but it's not to say that I couldn't perform as a bottom tier cruiser. I've certainly done it plenty of times. There are only two enemy destroyers per team, but one of the enemy destroyers is a Kamikaze R. Now, if you're not familiar with what that destroyer is. It was a special reward ship, part of the Project R series, and it basically is a Minikaze pre all of the nerfs. So it's got a very low detectability, a fairly high rate of fire with its torpedoes, with that quick torpedo reload, and they're actually decent torpedoes. Now, as I push up towards the decap point, the enemy team is also pushing up heavily towards the decap point. A lot of cruisers here, there's an enemy cruiser who's popped a smoke screen. I believe that's the emerald there. He's gonna get shots out. Managed to sit it on him a few times. He drops off detectability there, but just as I get my shots out. So will I hit him? Will I manage it? Yes, I do. Triple Citadel, first kill of the game for me, and first kill for my team. Now, my team's already lost a destroyer, so we're already down one destroyer. That's gonna give the enemy team a destroyer advantage, but don't you worry. That friendly destroyer there, he's gonna do a bang up job in this match and really really pull his weight as the sole surviving destroyer but he's not going to do that until about halfway through this game so we've got a lot of team carrying that we've got to do here as a friend and division mate and clan mate of mine stated when he saw this footage basically I gotta carry this team with a forklift, and there's no better forklift than the Perth here, given all of its abilities. So getting shots out there, I've already managed to damage this cruiser off in the distance quite heavily. He's very low health. Can I finish him off? Yes, I do it with the inertia fuse high, inertia fuse high explosive there, and so he is down. Two kills for me, and the only two kills that my team has all belong to me. Just like in yesterday's video with the Fletcher, the first several kills that my team is going to get, well, I'm the only one who manages to do it. I basically have to do a lot of carrying here at the beginning of this match. Now, I've got a broadside on Cruiser. He's out in the open. There is a smoke screen up there. I believe that was still set by the Emerald. Friendly Cruiser up there is going to engage him, but look at that. He's got himself killed by torpedoes. And those torpedoes now, they're coming in. My smoke screen is almost up anyway, so I gotta hit that accelerator, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead, hit full throttle on the ship, leave my smoke screen. It's gonna dissipate anyway. I'm gonna finish off this cruiser there. Look how low health he is. I finish him off. Yet another Citadel. They may only be 16 inch guns, but boy, they sure are effective. Now there's a T22 up there, and I would really love to shoot at him, but he's moving away from me. Well, I shouldn't say he's necessarily moving away so much as there's a lot of other ships that are shooting at me, and I need to move away rapidly from him. I need to open up that distance, stop firing, and drop off detectability. I tend to play the Perth a lot like I tend to play my destroyers, and that's basically I got to use the concealment that this ship offers. And it does have a very good concealment rating, 8.7 kilometers for a tier 6 what is effectively British cruiser, that's not bad, and arguably 8.7 kilometers for any cruiser is pretty reasonable. Now, enemy Leander up there, I'm actually going to go ahead and shoot at him. I've dropped off detectability just briefly, long enough for most people to start shooting at something else. I have high explosive loaded, I switch over to the armor piercing because that cruiser's giving me broadside. Now, the Leander is basically the British 
tech treat version of the Perth. The Perth is a slightly modified Leander, two funnels instead of one. But you can see here, what he has is he's got a heal ability. So I've switched over to the armor piercing, and my goal here is to try and continue to citadel him, as I've been doing to all of these cruisers, to the point where I can just kill him outright so he can't repair. Now, I'm getting shots out there just as I disappear behind this island so that my shots would be blocked, but I do manage to finish him off anyway. So there's four for four. Four kills that my team holds, and I have all four of them at this point. Enemy Cleveland has pushed up into our home base. The enemy team currently has both A and B, and they're capturing D, and they're preventing us from gaining points at our home cap of C. That's important to note. It's going to play in a very important factor here at the end of the game. Enemy T-22 out in the open. It looks like he had a smoke screen up at some point, but that smoke screen has dissipated. So now he's out in the open. I've come around this island, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot at him. It's very important that I finish him off now, because any destroyer, yes, even the T-22, can be a significant threat to cruisers. Specifically, they can spot me before I can spot him, and he's got torpedoes, and I simply don't need him. But look at that. Engine knocked out. He can't go very fast anywhere, and I finish him off getting my Kraken unleashed Five for five before the 10 minute mark has even hit. And now I've moved into the decap point, along with a friendly destroyer here who's about half health. So he's been engaging hardcore with people, getting shot at. And that's saying something considering he's a sneaky Japanese destroyer. Pop my smoke screen, go ahead. I'm gonna slow down to the crawl and I'm gonna get myself in position. Now I've got a problem here. I've got two battleships here. I've got a Queen Elizabeth up here and I've got a Fuso coming around that island. He's gonna go down that channel and I'd really, really like to get torpedoes out on him, but given his positioning, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that. However, I am gonna get my ship turned around because I launched torpedoes off on the other side. So I need to get to the other side of my ship to get these torpedoes off, speed up just a little bit to make that turn, slow back down, drop off concealment into my smoke screen. But you can see the torpedoes launched by the friendly destroyer there, they are actually gonna hit. And it looks like they're gonna hit him hard and this is going to be good. They do hit him hard. He drops off detectability. You'll notice that Cleveland actually managed to survive getting out of the sea cap one. I don't know how he's still alive, but it would be wonderful if he would die. The team has actually managed to finally kill an additional ship, so I'm not the only player with a kill up on the board. I'd still like to get torpedoes out on that Fuso, but he's disappeared. I can't see him. I don't know where he's at. Nobody's spotting him. Nobody's in a position to spot him, so I'm just left in the decap point with basically now nothing to shoot at. I've got this Queen Elizabeth up here, but he's behind an island and I'm not able to get shots off. Actually contemplated slowing down, stopping briefly and deciding what to shoot at. But finally, something pops up I can shoot at, so I'm gonna take shots at this New Mexico. And that's when the Queen Elizabeth starts moving again. And he's moving towards that open section of the channel and I contemplating my torpedoes off here and I'm gonna go ahead and do it because the friendly destroyer has backed off that's good but he's got his own torpedoes out there so I mean really this is mostly just just in case torpedoes but I'm almost confident that Queen Elizabeth is smart enough to avoid getting hit by any of my torpedoes if he's managed to dodge the destroyers torpedoes now, I am detected by aircraft. There are carriers in the game, two tier 5 carriers, both bogues. And so, because I'm detected, I do have to take into consideration this New Mexico that's in front of me. Now, the enemy team, we've managed to pull the team situations so that the enemy team is now down to four ships. We're down to five ships, but that's going to give us a slight advantage. The problem is the enemy team is up on points because they had the cap advantage early on. Take a big front citadel from that New Mexico. That definitely hurt me. I definitely didn't need to have that happen. And I'm trying to back off here. I'm still being detected by aircraft, but basically what I'm trying to do is get this island between me and this New Mexico, and preferably so that his shells will impact the island on their way towards my citadel. Managed to set him on fire, this is good for me. You can see those shots coming in from him do impact the island, so the island does exactly what I want it to. Now, enemy Fuso still alive, but look at the number of torpedoes he's gotta to deal with. He's got a friendly destroyer over there, putting torpedoes out, but also the carrier. 
Fuso manages to royally wreck me before he gets taken out. Those shots really, really hurt. You can see the tracers on those shells. He's using the Yamamoto commander, that premium commander, that special hero commander you get for completing that campaign. Still haven't completed the campaign, so I don't yet have it. There is the Kamikaze R. He's basically full health, and looking at his position, he's actually in a position he could cause me some significant problems, but he can also cause that friendly ship over there some very significant problems because of his positioning. So that friendly ship over there definitely needs to think about destroyer in the water very close to him. He needs to basically stay bow on and close in. Now, Fortunately for me, the carrier is keeping this battleship spotted. Well, sorta. The friendly ship is also keeping him spotted, so that, at the very least, is going to put me in a position where I can pay attention to where he's going and hopefully avoid getting hit. I don't have a lot of health left, and the Perth, unlike its British tech tree counterparts, does not get a heal. Instead, it gets high explosive, which arguably is better in some circumstances, but right now, having that heal would be very, very very useful. Pop my hydroacoustic because I don't know where that destroyer has gone, but I was detected, so that tells me that that destroyer did close the distance. There's the enemy bogey. Pops up recently. Fire high explosive. Now, I have inertia fuse high explosive, and just watch these shots land. That guy disappeared, but shots went out, and I managed to citadel this guy with inertia fuse high explosive. That just tells you how weak the armor on the bogue is. If you're in a battleship, and they always say fire armor piercing, but if you're firing at a carrier like the Bogue, well, look at that. These are six-inch guns, and this is a wrench of fuse high explosive. Citadel to him again. Enemy destroyer pops up. I really, really need to get shots out on this guy. I need to finish him off because he is a significant threat. He drops off detectability as the friendly destroyer moves out of line of sight. That's going to be a good thing for both of us, as it turns out, because that destroyer really doesn't want to engage a cruiser and a friendly destroyer here because that's an unfair fight and he doesn't need to be dealing with it hydro still active this is good for me in case torpedoes are coming out managed to capture the b cap point and there's a smoke screen up there now because that smoke screen is up there that tells me that destroyer has probably gone and hidden in that smoke screen or at the very least is trying to bug out so he's not going to stay within my realm of detectability too long there's the torpedoes that i was expecting come out here but i've already sped up here so i'm going to avoid most of them i'm getting shots out here that battleship hasn't quite cleared the headland of that island but i need to just get them out there in case he changes that enemy destroyer though he's actually engaging me with gunfire i'm actually kind of surprised that he would risk himself that way, but I was fairly low health, so it does, to some respect, make a reasonable understanding that he would want to do that. But now I'm really, really low health. I cannot afford to be shot at by basically anything at this point. Had my catapult fighters destroyed by that Bogues fighters, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for me because I use them for spotting more than anything. Now that Bogue, though, I'm not too worried about his torpedo planes coming in there managed to shoot down i think the torpedo planes actually and i'm gonna go ahead and get my torpedoes off on the other side again those are towards that new mexico i'm kind of hoping i can nail them and i'm just gonna go ahead i'm gonna turn away and i'm gonna run i make a little bit of a mistake here i decide i'm gonna open up on that new mexico with my guns try and set them on fire because my torpedoes actually kind of look good on him at this point and it would be wonderful if i could finish him off the enemy team is down to just three ships, and my team is also down to just three ships. That New Mexico fired high explosive at me. Kind of makes sense in this respect, because the high explosive would definitely kill me. I don't have a lot of health here. He fired it, managed to hit me, knocked out my torpedo tubes. I instinctively hit the repair button, because I was actually expecting to be set on fire. So that wasn't really fully intentional. Couldn't afford to be on fire, so that's why that R key got hit so fast. Fortunately for me, drop off detectability, the New Mexico's shots, well, he's now focused on our friendly destroyer. Our friendly destroyer has gotten himself spotted. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but because the focus of that New Mexico is now on the destroyer, that means he's not shooting at me. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to help our destroyer reset the 
B cap point. He's actually left the B cap point. He's basically going to go chase down that destroyer. At this point, the enemy team is currently in the lead with points. So if he does manage to kill our destroyer, he's going to continue to hold the lead. And it gives him free reign to go back to the B cap point and capture it at his will. I noticed that his turrets were starting to turn towards me. So I turn hard and away. And there are the shots that I was expecting by just very closely paying attention to those rear turrets starting to turn back towards me, avoided those shots again, very low health, that high explosive probably would have killed me outright. But looking at the situation, we know exactly where the enemy destroyer is, surprisingly enough, because he's capping the C cap point, he's capping our home base. If he hadn't done that, his team might have possibly been able to secure victory. He's still got a lot of health here and he could definitely kill me with his guns if he wanted to. But you see there, he's capping the sea cap point, so we know he's there. Got my guns pointed at him, and the carrier has come down on top of him. Managed to reset his cap progress, gonna continue hitting. Shots coming out there, he's gonna make a last effort to try and finish me off. Fortunately for me, managed to dodge those shots. Still hanging in there, and look at that. The carrier takes him out with a torpedo. If you've ever played carriers, you know how difficult that is. So kudos to our Bogue player for managing that hit. And that kill, along with the fact that our friendly destroyer managed to take out that New Mexico, means that now only the enemy Bogue is left. And because we still have our carrier and our carrier and our anti-AA has managed to basically take out most of the Bogue's attack aircraft means he has no more attack planes. So I'm pretty much safe here. And at this point, the enemy team can no longer win. You can see where he's gone. He's way too far away. The enemy team holds the A cap point, but it doesn't matter. We hold three of the cap points. We're up on points. And there's not a lot of time left in this battle considering three cap points, basically earning nine points every three seconds. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to win this one in very short order. But you can see there, barely survived this battle by the skin of my teeth. Basically just paying attention to the ships downrange and maneuvering. Also, very good on our Bogue, taking out that destroyer. Probably could have done it without his help, possibly, but given how low health I was and the fact that he was shooting at me, Definitely advantageous to that destroyer. It was unable to torpedo beats. Very, very useful. Of course, big shout out to the Bogue anyway, because he forced that destroyer to turn, and it, it's basically a Minikaze, which means his guns do not turn that quickly, so he was forced to focus on something other than me. 102 damage done there, 5 kills, Confederate Kraken Unleashed, of course, earning that Kraken that first half of the game. Really carried that first half of the game, and then the back half of the game, the Bogue and our destroyer both really stepped it up. Top of the team for XP earned over 2,000 base XP, but look at that, our Bogue, number two on the team, and our Mitsuki, that destroyer, number two on the team. The top three players on the team still alive there, and the top four players on the team, well, we're the only ones who actually managed to kill anything, and with the exception of the Bogue, everybody on the enemy team met their end to one of us four. So overall, a very, very good game. Anyway, that's it for today's video, folks. If you like the video, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. If you'd like to get semi-regular channel news and updates, you can do so by following me on Facebook. If you'd like to help support me in the channel, and I encourage you to do so, every little bit helps, you can become my supporter on Patreon. If you've got a replay like this one that you'd like to see featured on my channel, you can do so by sending to my email. Don't forget those post-battle results screenshots. And if you'd like to watch me play World of Warships and various games live after the holiday season, so starting more regularly again next year, you can do so by following me on Twitch. You can find the links for all of those in the video description down below. And as always, I'll see you next time. This is Captain Rye, signing off.